All right, so everybody, thanks a lot for joining. Uh, this is our second webinar of seven webinar series with uh, Personizely founder, Sergio Kazak. And in today's topic, uh, we will be talking about website personalization one on 101, uh, grow your business the right way. And uh, I will be asking a lot of questions uh, um, to, to Sergio uh, about this interesting trend because like I see it from everywhere. I mean, like there are a lot of trends, but website personalization and creating like custom experiences for uh, customers, uh, like on scale, it's something I see more and more often. So if you want to scale your business, you are at the right spot at the right time. So Sergio, how are you today? Is it okay? Are you doing well? Yeah, it's been a great day. It's good weather. and I'm, I'm pumped up for the webinar. Yeah, me too. All right, so let's jump right into it. I don't like really long introductions. Uh, so, Sergio, can you just quickly tell, tell us what is website personalization and why should we care? So, uh, first of all, uh, let me, uh, like, what is website personalization? So, uh, when you have a website, what you don't want is to show people dif uh, like the same content to, to, to different people because people have different intentions, different motivation, different source and so on. So website personalization is uh, the thing that is going to help you uh, tailor the website, uh, tailor all your messaging to all the visitors, uh, to every exact persona. So uh, uh, website personalization is really important if you want to uh, increase the relevance of your content and also if you want to do if you're running ads for example you can really lower your ad spend so website personalization is uh, a tool and if used right uh, you can uh, increase all your numbers saying conversions mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. customer happiness and uh, ad spend can get, get lower. all right all right yep. so if you're talking about website personalization what what are the elements? What are the things on a website we can actually personalize? Is it everything or uh, are there some limitations we can personalize for each and every customer who visits? So uh, talking about uh, this, uh, I can say that uh, there are of course uh, a few uh, things that you want to personalize, personalize first of all. So it's really important for you to be able to personalize uh, each one, the hero titles, the the main catch phrases, the, the main images, mm -hmm. and also it's important that you personalize your call to actions because uh, like different people have different intent and if you have the right messaging on your call to action, you can really push uh, the visitor a little bit, a little bit closer to the, to the uh, action they have to perform. So uh, first of all, I want to say that these are the important things. Uh, yes, uh, for example, if personally, you can personalize, I think, 99% of everything you have on the website. Uh, the buttons, the titles, the messaging, uh, um, mostly everything. It uh, surely depends on the structure of your website, but uh, it's uh, almost uh, limitless. But what I want to mention is the fact that it's really important to know what to personalize. You don't want to go too deep on some unimportant things. It's really important to notch down the the headline messaging, the images, and so on. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, that that was a really really good answer. Thank you. And we have a we have a first question, which is actually really relevant. And before I will I will ask it to you, uh, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to uh, send it directly into the chat, and we will include it into the conversation. And um, Whitehow is asking. Uh, if I have a WordPress website, what are the elements? So how deep can I go actually with the, with, uh, with the personalization? Um, can I just change, I don't know, headlines or let's, let's, let's just do this use case. I have a WordPress website. What can I change and how do I start? Yeah, yeah for a WordPress website, you just have to put the code snippet to your website and you are going to be able to edit like any, any uh, block from Elementor uh, using personalizely. Mm -hmm. Of course, you want to uh, take care that every time you do changes inside Elementor, you are going to need to check out if they match to uh, what your personalization are doing. So you have to uh, keep this, this in sync. But uh, it's really uh, working with uh, any like builder or framework and so on. So you, you should be good Elementor. 
All right, uh, we have uh, another question, Tim. Uh, I won't be asking it right now, but I wrote it down and we will ask it uh, further in the conversation. Uh, and I want to start like really from the beginning. So how do I start with the website personalization? Because you said that you, you need to know what you want to personalize, right? Uh, so at which point do you think it's a good time to start personalizing and playing with all these things on your website for specific customers? Yeah, so, uh, uh, like, f my opinion on, uh, I have a, a, an opinion on when you have to start thinking about website personalization. Basically, uh, almost any, any website, when I go to websites right now, I just try and, uh, and analyze it and see, okay, these guys could have personalized this and that. But uh, some really uh, important factors are, for example, if you have a website and you have uh, a lot of channels, you run traffic from. For example, you have the ads, you have the SEO, you have some partners, uh, you have some uh, for, uh, like West, blo West blogging and so on. Mm -hmm. So uh, on all, uh, all of these channels are different and the people coming from these channels could be different. So you want to have your UTM parameters set up correctly and based on them, you can uh, change uh, everything on your website. Uh, another good, uh, uh, good like reasoning to start personalizing is uh, when you are running ads, and when you are specifically when you are running different ads. So uh, you have different campaigns for different say sub products of your uh, of your website, or uh, you may be selling different products to different audiences. Sometimes mm -hmm. you have uh, uh, an ad campaign for like some uh, enterprise clients and the other day you have an ad campaign for some uh, like small clients. So okay. you want to like to nail down the, the messaging uh, according to the visitor's persona. So if you have, uh, you know, if you know you have different types of potential customers coming to your website, you need to, uh, to adjust uh, everything uh, to their, to their needs and to their intent, to their interest. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. Uh, also, All right. So, so, so to so to sum it up, uh, one of the uh, big things when to start personalizing is when you have a lot of sources of traffic, right? Yep, and yep. if if I if I if I could go a little bit deeper into it, uh, I want to ask Tim's question. So, for example, if I'm running uh, Google AdWords, right? Google AdWords campaign, uh, can I uh, use like dynamic uh, keywords from this ca campaign uh, to write it on a on a on the website? Yep, so uh, uh, actually, as I, I've already talked in the group a lot about it, and it's really it's a really hot topic. Uh, yes, you can do this. You can uh, uh, insert uh, your keyword in the URL as a UTM parameter, and then you can display it right inside personally. So if, for example, someone is looking for hotels in Europe uh, in Google and uh, clicks on your ad, you can display just hotels in Europe uh, on your website, and okay. if the Europe is, uh, you can change Europe to uh, any other location, and you can just uh, um, just personalize this as a keyword replacement. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yes, this is also something. Uh, it, it's it's a bit more deep. This one. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I, I think uh, to to start doing this, you have to have like a lot of ad traffic. But it's mm -hmm. if you nail this mm -hmm. down, it could be very very strong. You can really change change your conversions and also the mm -hmm. relevance of mm -hmm. your content, which will make the ad uh, cheaper and so on. Amazing. Uh, I think we, we can uh, later, maybe in the replay, uh, in the discussion below the replay, we can show the URL structure. Uh, how, how does it actually, how does it actually look like? Uh, all right. So one of the things uh, that matters, um, one of the things that matter is, uh, is the number of number of uh, traffic channels you are, you are using to, uh, to drive traffic to your website. Is there anything else where, when uh, I should consider using website personalization? I think like basically any website could use, uh, could use it because uh, there are some uh, simplest cases that might uh, help uh, you engage better with your audience and not annoy people with uh, uh, unrelevant uh, call to actions or pop-ups. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. For example, uh, uh, what I see a lot of a lot of websites have that subscribe to our um, blog or subscribe to our newsletter yeah. uh, pop up or maybe they have this in line into their food or something like this. So 
once you subscribe to it, uh, when you go to the website again, you see it again. But That's why, true. why do you, why do you promote this uh, this offer when you already know this person and you maybe know his intent? And in the same place, you can promote something different. So this mm -hmm. way, we're talking more about widgets, but it's also website personalization because you uh, you want to continue the the funnel, like you want to push uh, you want to push the the visitor to, to a funnel. You want to move him closer to the end of his journey mm -hmm. where he buys mm -hmm. and you make money. So mm -hmm. uh, basically, uh, like I think 99% of websites uh, can uh, use uh, personalization in a, in some, some in some way. Uh, it, it really depends on uh, on how much traffic you have, of course, yeah. and yeah. Uh, it, it, and uh, if you think that you have a few, as I said, a few uh, traffic sources, it's, that's a good start. But uh, I think mm -hmm. you can just use this like tool to move the needle of your conversions yeah. just on any is website. There, is, there, is there a number you would recommend starting with website personalization? Like if you, if you have a traffic of X, uh, it's a good time to, to start personalizing. I mean like when you have to, uh, 50 visits per month, it doesn't make any sense, right? It depends because for example, if you know you have 50 visits per month, but all 50 of them are qualified uh, visitors, so the visitor with, with intent, but they have different needs. This could also be a, a, a very good starting point. So it really depends more on the quality of the traffic. If you have, mm -hmm. uh, if you have quality traffic with intent, then you are good to go. Amazing. All right, let's talk more about uh, specific use cases. Um, we will be talking about them like really deep uh, in, uh, in next week, uh, every day actually. Uh, so what would you say that are the most specific use cases of website personalization? Is it like e-com, is it blogging, or what are the main areas uh, you would focus on uh, as, a, as a founder of personalizer? Uh, so website personalization, it, it could of course be using almost anywhere, but like uh, very good examples are, for example, let's, let me start with uh, SaaS companies. Okay. So if you are SaaS, of course you, um, Sometimes, let's say a good example is uh, you you are integrating with a few companies, mm -hmm. and uh, and people are finding you from your uh, CEO traffic or in some other way based on that integration. So, for example, uh, you really want to for people when they land on the website to to see the information they the, to get to the aha moment faster. So this way, you need to. You need to personalize uh, the copy in a way that when they come, they just bam and they and, and they see it. For example, uh, uh, I've done a, a little uh, like internal case study for a CRM, comp CRM company, okay. and uh, they were um, they had pages like uh, uh, CRM for like this CRM for SaaS, this CRM for okay. enterprise, this CRM for retail, this CRM for um, uh, for uh, uh, I don't know uh, any other business type. Mm -hmm. So and they were, weren't personalizing at all. So what I what I offered in that case study was to personalize your uh, messaging, your like your uh, first of all your catchphrase mm -hmm. to the intent of the buyer, of the buyer. Because mm -hmm. when I found out that CRM, I was looking for CRM for SaaS. But when I uh, landed there, I've just seen a generic uh, CRM message. So it would be perfect if you, when I um, was okay. looking at us, I am landing to a website where I read uh, CRM for SaaS. Mm -hmm. That's a, a, a very uh, uh, good thing to start with. Mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, of course, uh, uh, why also personalization is good is because people often when they come, like they land on your landing page or website, they are not sure if they are in the right place. So you, they have to dig for information. But That's if true. you, for example, use uh, the keyword replacement, you can match the copy of the landing page of the website to, uh, to what is in the ad. So this okay. way, the visitor is sure, like sure 100% that he, is, he can find what he's looking for on this website. So because uh, for you, it's important, uh, like for you as a business owner, it's important that the uh, the customer is going to like leave his email or maybe he is going to make the buy or something. Mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. You need to push him to make the 
first step and to uh, go, on to, uh, go for contact. Mm -hmm. so, okay. uh, if, if, I, if I step in, um, is there actually a way how we can personalize uh, the website based on, for example, email content? Let's say that I'm sending like email newsletters and I'm sending it to Jim. And Jim is from New York and he is, uh, I don't know, passionate about fishing. Can I can I literally take these three uh, three terms from uh, from my CSV file or whatever I'm using uh, to to send out emails uh, and use it on my website? Yeah. So if you have a, like a good email list with uh, uh, a lot of uh, information about your customers or your potential customers, your, subscri your subscribers in this case, then it's uh, it's it's a really cool idea to uh, to personalize based on all of this information. So for example, yes, if you have uh, a tag, say in your email marketing system saying that this person likes phishing, you can uh, you can personalize by, by, by it. So you are offering something okay. that the person is really interested in. Also, you, you can of course uh, uh, also uh, greet this person with uh, uh, personalized messages like, hi team, uh, do you want to see new phishing gear? Uh, and uh, this is gonna like resonate really good with him. Uh, of right, course. So, uh, so, so I, I feel that we we are get, getting somewhere. This is exciting. So let's say that I would like to use this for cold emailing, right? So yep. uh, I will create like the big CSV file with uh, hundreds of names in it, uh, hundreds of uh, interests and all the other information. Um, for example, I get from LinkedIn and so on. Uh, and then I will just send it out. Uh, through my uh, email marketing uh, software, such as, I don't know, Funnel Bake or uh, Mailshake or whatever it is. And then from the email, after somebody clicks, they will land on the landing page uh, specifically made for them, uh, talking directly to them. Is it possible? Yep, yep definitely. That's what is... Yeah, that would be a really good for selling. <laughs> yep, yep, definitely. Yes, personalization is... It's, it's really important to personalize your website for people who are there for the first time because they are not sure what they're going to find there. So cold outreach is a very, very good uh, case for personalization. You can also really include cool. yeah. uh, like, uh, like parameters in your URL uh, to uh, further uh, include them in the copy of your, mm -hmm. of your website. So mm -hmm. you can match the the copy of your email, outreach email, to the copy of your website. So uh, again, as I said, when the people land, they, uh, they, the website is resonating with them. It's something they are looking for. All right. Um, so we are talking that we know a lot of interests. Uh, is there actually a limit of, uh, of these parameters we have, uh, we can use uh, with personalizing? No, there is no limit with that, and uh, also. Uh, so if I take it to the extreme, I can literally show completely different page to everyone. Yeah, definitely. Yes, completely. You can like have fifty variations if you want. Uh, you can mm -hmm. also have like uh, uh, keyword replacements in this URLs, and you will never see the same page <laughs> ever again. <laughs> I see a different okay. page. <laughs> And is it, is it possible with, with, uh, with ads, for example, from Facebook or Google AdWords as well to just uh, uh, to take, take the keyboard from the, from the string, URL string and, uh, yep. and put, it, put it there? Is, is there a yep. limit on, on, on how many keyboards I can put into the string? No, I don't think there's a limit. It's like as much as a browser, uh, browser allows, but I, I, I don't know. <laughs> <the number. laughs> so so yeah, it will be one of these really long links, like you can yeah, yeah, scroll yeah, yeah. to find out? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but for example, for Google AdWords, it's even better because uh, there you can uh, really use the keyword replacement, uh, like you can notch it down. Uh, for Facebook, it's a little bit different because it adds are uh, just offerings. You don't have the keyword. You just have the campaign. You have the like. You can personalize by ad. Mm -hmm. But when we are talking about Bing ads or Google AdWords, you can uh, really dive deeper and okay. use the keywords, use the the terms used in the mm -hmm. search box in the website. So the, the, this uh, this this question might be actually quite basic, but. 
uh, if I'm like uh, creating a sales funnel, online sales funnel, of course, there's a like landing page, there's a order page, there's a thank you page, maybe some upsells, downsells, uh, order bumps and so on. Uh, can I personalize all the content uh, on every of these pages or are we talking really about the first, uh, first page where, uh, where the person lands? Okay, so it's a good question because like how personalized it works right now, you can decide, for example, if you have uh, some blocks that are repeating on different pages, you mm -hmm. can personalize them on one page, it's going to be personalized everywhere. But if you want to personalize specifically, uh, like every page is different and has different content and you want to personalize that content, you have to create different campaigns for that. But you can like create as many campaigns as you want. We don't have limits for that and you just personalize mm -hmm. uh, every, every stage of the funnel, yeah. That's, that's amazing, that's amazing. Uh, Tim, thanks a lot for your question. Uh, we, will, we will discuss it uh, after uh, the, the webinar. Tim is asking if you can, uh, if you can provide the list of, uh, of the UT UTM codes, um, but I think it's way too much specific to, uh, to talk it here, and I think we will post it under, uh, under the replay video. We'll, uh, if we'll have okay. a help desk article. Uh, yeah, okay, okay. Or something, I will share the link, yes. All right, all right. Okay, so another topic I wanna, I wanna uh, dig into is A-B testing, because we were talking about yesterday uh, that you are not very fan of A-B testing, right? <laughs> you, think that, you think that personalization uh, can actually like win over the A-B testing, can kill A-B testing, which makes sense, right? Because if you A-B test, you just compare two versions and you're seeing which works the be better or maybe multiple versions. So what would you say like is the biggest difference and why do you think personalization is better than A-B testing? So first of all, uh, uh, for, uh, I mean, A-B testing is still a good, like, a good thing. It's, it's just better not than nothing, good right? enough. <laughs> it is, it's just not good for most of the businesses. Because for example, if you are uh, like a multi-million dollar company with millions and millions of traffic, maybe it makes sense for you to try A-B testing because the statistical significance will uh, really, uh, like there will be a real statistical significance and you can take decisions based on your A-B test. So if the button is red or the button is uh, yellow mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. on. Uh, there were examples uh, of A-B testing from uh, uh, Obama campaigns and uh, they, they had really, like, really interesting results. But when you have a website where you have uh, 2,000 visitors per month or 2,000 visitors per day, there's like no real statistical significance for that. You, it's just guess, guesswork. And uh, you like your percent, like percent difference is gonna be like just some uh, statistical random. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. It's much better to, to try to define your audience if you don't have uh, different sources of traffic and so on, you can create campaigns like quizzes, surveys, like with personalizely too, and ask people about uh, to like to fill their profile with their interest. For example, you can create a, a pop-up asking, okay, what are you looking for? Are you looking for, for, for this, this, and this? And based on that, you can personalize the messaging further. So, I think uh, personalization is better because you can uh, use it successfully on much at much smaller scale. You can start from mm -hmm. like small websites to, to big websites uh, and almost anywhere. Whereas A/B testing, I think, in my opinion, is uh, really more about the it's more about the uh, big fishes who can like allow themselves to to, to guess and to try and okay. to find the better version. Yes, so. That's, that's my opinion. That's amazing. Uh, you said something about uh, pop-ups and uh, that's actually one of the last topics I want to discuss with you today. And um, you mentioned that uh, it would be really cool to discuss and I agree, uh, how to create personalized experience uh, with widgets. So for example, uh, how to use placeholders in widget text and so on, uh, targeting by country. Can you tell us a little bit more about it, Sergio, please? Yes, yeah, so uh, we've talked really uh, like really much about uh, website personalization, changing your messaging and changing your body, the body of the website. But of course, uh, sometimes you want to promote offers, you have different offers, 
different offerings, different products on the website, and uh, you want to uh, to use pop-ups for that. And when using pop-ups, it's really important. Like pop-ups is a very strong instrument, but if not used right, uh, you can really annoy people a lot because mm -hmm. like pop-ups, people don't like pop-ups. When they see pop-ups, they're just looking for the close button, you know. So mm -hmm. you have to nail down to make them personalized and to offer the like the correct offering to the correct visitor. So, okay. uh, for example, you don't want to show, show that the uh, US shipping is free to a person coming from Germany, yes? Because it's, this is only gonna me, make me wanna live in USA, yes? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, yeah, that's true. and you, you, don't, you don't, so in this case, for the German, for example, for this example, for German people, you can show like some uh, special offer for them, something like this. Also, you can use uh, the placeholders which you use in uh, in, uh, in in website personalization. Uh, you can also use them in widgets. So, for example, if you have uh, an offer and you have a form saying, "Okay, you want to let's say get a quote of uh, a price quote," mm -hmm. you ask them for their name, you ask them for their email, and when they visit the next page, you can say, "Okay, hey, Sergio." Um, uh, here is a thing you must check out. So you already know this person you, you, and the website is starting to discuss with them. It's the same what happens with email because uh, a lot of people like talk about personalizing emails using the, uh, the name placeholder, using the, uh, like the relevant information inside email. But why don't make the website speak to the visitors too? So mm -hmm. uh, that's why I think that having like compelling call to actions in pop-ups and the relevant offers is really mm -hmm. important that's that's really interesting i'm thinking about if it's that powerful why am i not seeing it like everywhere there, there are no websites calling me jacob they are like hey hey <laughs> online marketer do this do that why, why is it not like so like white like spread in the online marketing industry. Yep. Also, of course, it's important to to be sure that you are using uh, like pop-ups, right? Because as I said, pop-ups are all, like are really annoying. So you want to to give enough uh, in, in, like in return to your visitors mm -hmm. that he is not annoyed by the pop-up, but is really uh, like excited to to dive into your funnel okay. and to start okay. the conversation with the website. Yeah. All right. Uh, can you can you share some maybe some average numbers? Uh, you you are aware of like what personalization can do in a in a more like specific and concrete uh, terms. So, for example, for let's say a lot of people have the like the simple uh, like email newsletter or lead magnets on the websites, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of them uh, it's like the average number of like the average number for conversion okay. on the market is, is at a few percent it's like up to seven percent but with if you are making the messaging compelling and you are like you are uh, offering the right offer to the right person you can grow it up to over ten percent with uh, mm -hmm. with ups and uh, talking about website personalization when you are when you are personalizing the website it can like for example if you have around two or three percent uh, conversion rate if you just move the needle by one percent or by one and a half percent it can make you uh, like a ton of money because it's like it's all you can sometimes you can twice the, uh, the conversions just mm -hmm. using like a compelling messages because people don't drop off from the first page but mm -hmm. then they're there in the right place and try to dig deeper to find to buy to leave the email to get a quote and so on and mm -hmm. so on Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And I can do everything with personalizely, right? Yep, definitely. All right. <laughs> All right. So of what we, we talk today is possible with personalizely. Yes. That's amazing. Sergio, uh, thanks a lot for all this, all these golden nuggets. It was amazing. And for all of you who are still watching, thanks a lot. Um, as, as you probably know, personalizely is available on the pitch ground site. And we are having uh, we are having more webinars uh, coming next week, uh, and I will walk you through to through each of the topics. And we'll we'll be going live at the same time as today. 
and we'll be going live every single day. So on Monday, we will talk about how to increase e-com sales. Uh, on Tuesday, uh, if you have a SaaS business, Tuesday, Tuesday is, a, uh, is a day for you. Uh, then on Wednesday, we are be talking about how to boost the conversion rate if, uh, on the mobile uh, devices. And on Thursday, uh, we'll be talking about, about personalizedly 101 and underground hacks, how to smash your competi uh, competition. So we just really scratched the surface today with uh, all the topics we discussed. So on uh, Thursday, we will go really de uh, deep into, into all the specific uh, features personalizedly offers. And on Friday, finally, nine website personalization growth hacks uh, to improve your conversions. Uh, everything is available on personalizely.pitchground.com. Uh, you can register for all of these webinars if you already actually haven't. Uh, all right, so Sergio, thanks a lot for, for your time. Thanks a lot, everyone, for joining. And don't forget to grab your personalized license because, I mean, there's, uh, there's so many things you can, you can do with this. And thanks a lot for, uh, for joining, everyone. Yeah, thank you too. Thanks everyone. It was a pleasure. I'm just uh, excited to share more and more uh, golden content with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. All right. Thanks a lot, Sergio. And say, say hi to, uh, to Damian, your co-founder. Yep, definitely. Yeah, thanks for right. watching. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Bye.